Worshiping with us today. We have gathered in this moment to celebrate the goodness and the grace of our God. And so, again, we are just thrilled to have you and your family joining us for this service today. The Bible asks this question When the Son of Man returns, shall he find faith? What a question. Jesus is saying, When I come, Again, will I find a group of people that are full of faith and that are faithful to my cause? As we begin today, I want to remind you that as Christians, we are called to be faithful in our walk with the Lord. Jesus says, He who endures to the end, the same shall be saved. And so don't let anything or anyone keep you down or hold you back in your walk with the Lord. You stay firm and you stay faithful to Him. One of the great ways that you can stay faithful is by being actively involved in church. And beginning next Sunday morning, we will start the transition of having two worship services. At 9 o'clock a.m., we'll be having our drive-in worship service out there in the parking lot. And we invite you to come and be a part of that. And then the second service will be our indoor worship service happening right here in the sanctuary. It'll happen at 10.30 a.m. And we invite you to come and be a part of that. We do want you to know that during both services, especially this indoor worship service, we will be maintaining social distance. And while you are here, we ask that you will follow the guidelines that have been set in order for this pandemic. But we are excited and we are looking forward to worshiping with you and your family again next Sunday, whether that be outside for the drive-in worship service at 9 a.m. or for the indoor worship service happening at 10.30 a.m. It's going to be a great time of worship and celebration together. Now, today you are in for a treat from the Lord. God has a special blessing, a special message to you. And so I would encourage you to open up wide, open up your ears to hear the voice of the Lord, and open up your heart to receive the blessing that He has for you in this service today. Right now, you be blessed and you worship during this ministry and song, and then you be encouraged by the message that our pastor brings to us today. We are redeemed, Jesus. Thank you that we can say so today, Lord.
As Pastor Bailey says, thank you for tuning in and understand that God's got a word for you today that will revolutionize your living and will bless your heart even in this generation. I want you to take your Bibles and go with me over to Daniel chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 1 through 7. It says this, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and beseeched it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of their princes, children in whom there was no blemish, but well-favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had great ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah by the names of Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah, Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. May God add his richest blessings to the reading of his word. I want you to understand that throughout your life as a child of God, there is one primary principle that God asked you to follow. Throughout your time as a child of God, one principle is primary and foremost. And this one principle is always to be practiced and to be kept foremost in our lives, regardless of our location, regardless of our circumstances, regardless of our situation. It's uh, best summarized by what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Jesus says, But ye seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all the other things will be added unto you. Now, the reason I wanted you to hear about these three Hebrew boys is that they had seen their nation devastated. And now a difficult trial lay ahead of each one of them. The king, Nebuchadnezzar, wanted not only to take Jews to Babylon, but he wanted these Jews to become Babylonians. He was not interested in just putting them to work. He wanted them to learn his tongue and to start doing things his way. Christians today are facing the same trial. Satan wants us, because of the difficulties of these times, to become conformed to this world. And sadly... Too many Christians have grown weaker in their faith and have compromised their faith and have lost their commitment and their dedication to God during this difficult time. When Christians give in to the world, have no doubt, make no mistake, they will lose their power. They will lose their joy and they will lose their testimony. In the last little while in America, we've been struggling with this viral pandemic. 
We've been going through an economic shutdown. We have been amazed at lawless rioting and destruction. And sadly, some in our society today, even some in religion and some in government, are trying to get you and I and you and me to enter the twilight zone. These loud liberal mobs are trying to make our nation lose its collective values and our collective common sense. This, um, this mob that some have labeled council culture, they want to pretend that um, it's all right for a man to, to become a woman. If a dude pretends that he's a woman, they insist that you and I have to pretend with him. They tried to teach us that somehow it's un-American for the census to count how many Americans are actually living in America. They want us to believe that Russians influencing our elections is a bad thing, which it is, but that it's all right for illegals to vote in our elections. They want us to think that it's all right for people to say there's no such thing as gender, and at the same time, these very same people insist on a female president. We see throughout the world socialism collapsing, and we see the devastation socialism wreaks upon society. But they tried to teach us that socialism would be a good thing for America. They tried to convince us that it's all right to hold people responsible for things that happened before they were even born, while they refused to hold people responsible for bad things that they've been doing since they were born. And somehow or other, they think when we point out their hypocrisy and the failure of their thinking, that we are the ones who are intolerant and mean-spirited. We're living in an upside-down world for sure. And the old devil is trying to turn it, you and me, upside down with it and trying to take away our beliefs, our godly values, our Christian behaviors. Listen, Christian, don't you let him succeed in doing that in your life. The devil's purpose is to try to make you become sensitive to his whispers and his cues and make you conform to wickedness. Don't you do it. If you compromise with the devil, you will lose your spiritual power. You will lose your eternal joy and you will lose your effective testimony. So hear me today. Resolve to practice this single principle and do it faithfully. I will seek God and his kingdom and his righteousness first. And I will believe and will receive all these other things. And I know God will add them to me. You see, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel all became examples to us of seeking and serving God first, even in hostile times, even in a strange place, even when people's thoughts and thinking is radical and upside down. And they become a good example for us. I want to mention three things that they show us. First of all, if you're putting God first, it means that you're going to be faithful in passionate living. It means if you'll go over to Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, that text that we read, that these three Hebrew children and Daniel were facing the king's wrath, but they were faithful in not breaking their culinary 
restrictions and guidelines. The old king wanted them to eat from his table, to eat his product, to eat his way when God had told them another way to eat. But Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 says, Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And he asked, you just give us some water and some vegetables. You see, Daniel shows us that God wants us to be passionate in our living for him, conscientious in our dedication, courageous in our duties, and confident in our destiny that God will take care of us. This is the part of being faithful that God wants you and me to practice today. He says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your heavenly Father. Secondly, in the book of Daniel, we find that putting God first means that we'll be faithful in public worship. If you go over to Daniel chapter 3, verses 16 through 18, we find these three Hebrew children facing a fiery furnace if they didn't fall down and worship Nebuchadnezzar and pray to Nebuchadnezzar and exalt Nebuchadnezzar. But in that passage of Daniel 3, it says this, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not hesitant to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. You know, this is a time, even though there's uh, several ways to worship, you can worship inside with guideline restrictions. You can worship outdoors like the parking lot service that we have. You can worship online, but the big thing is that you worship God. You do it faithfully. You do it regularly. This is not a time to find time to run down to the beach or up to the mountains. This is a time that you make sure every day, every Sabbath day, every Sunday, every week, I'm taking time to do worship with the people of God. And if you're doing it on, online, just gather your family and, and view it together as the family of God. If you're out in the parking lot, do it with the people all around you in the cars. When we start this second service indoors, gather with the people of God. But you be faithful in worshiping the Lord. Single in your reverence, knowing that there's no God but our God. Steady in your reverence, knowing that you will not be distracted. You will not defer from giving God dedicated time to worship and praise and exalt him and secure in your reverence knowing that he will take care of you, that he sees you in those acts and those activities of worship. This is part of our faithfulness today too. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 through 25 says, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the habit of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. I hope you read the news today, night before last, uh, when uh, the Giants were playing ball the whole ball team lined up on the field and 
uh, bow down in recognition of Black Lives Matter. But every one of that Giants team bowed down but one individual. Their relief pitcher stood over around first base. And after the game, he was asked why he did not bow down. He said, well, basically, uh, it's because I'm a Christian. He said, I, I have some problems with Black Lives Matter and their, their teaching. He was asked what it was. He said, well, number one is that they have a tendency to be Marxist. And I don't agree with Marxism. He said, secondly, they are negative about the traditional nuclear family. And uh, so I'm not supporting that. He says, I'm a Christian and I believe I only bow for the Lord. You be dedicated in these times and seriously dedicated regardless of what's happening out there in this upside down society right now. Thirdly, when we look at uh, these Hebrew children in Babylon, we understand that God first means faithfulness in personal devotion. In personal devotion. In Daniel chapter 6, verses 9 through 10, we see that Daniel was facing the possibility of a lion's den. But he was faithful. Some jealous people, jealous of Daniel's status, got King Darius to issue a decree that any prayer, any petitions could only be offered to King Darius. That if any man was found petitioning anyone else but Darius, exalting anyone else but Darius, that he would face that fiery nor that fiery trial of a lion's den. But Daniel chapter 6, verses 9 and 10 says this, When King Darius signed the writing and the decree, then Daniel, knowing that what he has written was signed, he went to his house. Now, if I could add a little bit to that, it, I would just say he still went to his house. And his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled down, or I would tell you, he still kneeled down on his knees and he prayed three times a day. And he prayed and he gave thanks before his God as he had always done. Now I can't tell you what you do in the private place. I can't tell you when I'm not around you or when others aren't around you what's going on in the private place. But you know, you're the one that sees the man in the mirror. You're the one that knows how you spend your 24-7. But Daniel kept on praying. He was genuine in his Bible study, one of the things that Daniel was praying about was he had studied the word and he knew that God was working a divine purpose and was going to bring liberty and freedom back to the Jews again. And that was through being genuine in his Bible study. And then he was gallant in his prayer. He didn't care what Darius had signed or said. He didn't care about his distractors and their jealousy. He was uh, recognizing that he was to devote himself to prayer to God regularly, frequently, faithfully. And he was godly in his devoted witness. He didn't shut up the door, draw the curtain, put a piece of plywood over the windows. He left the windows open. Not to show off, his window was always open. He was looking toward Jerusalem. 
He was godly in his devoted witness. And this is part of our being faithful to God today. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28 and 32 and 33, this is what Jesus says. Fear you not them which kill the body, but they're not able to kill the soul. But you fear him which is able to destroy both your soul and your body in hell. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. And whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Listen, my brother, listen, my sister. The world has gone crazy. But you've got friends and family members that are unsaved. And they're upset and they're anxious and they're full of fear. You've got good news to share with them. You've got truth to share with them. And that means that in this time that we're living in, you live out your personal devotion and faithful witness each and every day because saintly people have only one simple principle that they must live by. And if we practice this principle, everything else will find its place. And Jesus summarized it best in Matthew 6, verse 33. He says, now you seek First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. At our men's freedom breakfast a few weeks ago, I shared what I hope would have happened to them coming out of this pandemic situation. And I told them that they had extra time and extra opportunity, but they needed to use it wisely. First of all, I encourage them, as I will encourage you today, you need to come out of this closer to God than what you went into this stuff. James chapter 4, verse 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify you your minds, you double-minded. Then secondly, I encourage them as I encourage you today, come out of this pandemic better as a Christian. Second Peter chapter one, verses five through eight, Peter says, now, besides everything that you've already ha got happening in you, you be, you be sincere and add to your faith virtue and to your virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience goodness and to godliness brotherly love and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you should neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I hope you come out closer to God, better as a person, and then finally, I hope you come out wiser as a Christian. James chapter 1, verse 5, James says, If any lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Don't you be caught and uh, shattered if something like this happens to our world again, you be prepared. And you come out of this pandemic ready to take off and succeed with God's blessings and God's help. When we as Christians put God first and live righteously, we will enjoy divine, supernatural power flowing in our lives. And we will know joy unspeakable that's full of glory. And we will have a testimony that is so full of life and animated with eternal life that others must believe. Notice what happened to these three Hebrew boys and to Daniel. 
They received promotion. Daniel chapter 1 says at the end of that period, that 10 days, that these boys' countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the other children that did eat the king's meat and that the keeper of the eunuchs gave them the diet they wanted. They received protection when they, uh, those three Hebrew boys went in that fiery furnace. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 3, that, uh, and the princes and the governors and the captains being gathered together saw these men upon whose body the fire had no power, nor was the hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. You know why? Because the fourth man, the son of the living God, went into that fiery furnace with them. And then notice the last thing, when Brother Daniel got out of uh, that, that lion's den, Daniel chapter 6 said King Darius put forth a decree that everybody in his dominion better speak well of Daniel's God because Daniel's God is the living God and he's steadfast forever. And verse 28 says, so Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. So resolve today, right where you are, child of God, to live by this simple principle. Today and for the rest of my life, I'm going to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and I believe and I know that everything else that I need and desire will be added unto me. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your presence. Now, Lord, give us boldness in this hour. Let us be lights that shine brightly in this dark society. And Lord, let us speak up and speak out for our Savior and Lord, and let it come from a heart and a life that is serving you faithfully each and every day. And Father, for every person, for all your children that keep you first, open up the windows of heaven Protect them, provide for them, and prosper them. We ask in Jesus' holy name, amen.